Lindsay, you have no idea what we're even talking about in this podcast. I feel like this might be one of those episodes where I do a lot of, mm-hmm, uh-huh, oh, yeah. and you do the majority of the talking. I'm going to try to change that by asking you, so what do you think? Okay. All right. And and then you're going to supply what you think. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Chewy. Very good. Is that out of your system or are you going to, going to have a backup? No, I'm good. Got, I usually only sneeze once. Really? You don't have, you have an understudy sneeze? I do when I'm like actually sick, but if it's just like a random sneeze, then it's always just once, which makes me really sad because I love sneezing more than a lot of things in this world. And I'm always sad when it's only one. I've heard of people who really like sneezing. <laughs> Caitlin, how do you feel about sneezing? I love a good sneeze. Yeah? Doesn't it feel so good? And like one of the worst feelings is having to sneeze. And then like if you're somewhere where you can't sneeze, so you have to like blow a brain cell or two. sneeze. Yeah, that hurts. God, it is so emotionally painful for me. Emotionally? Yes. And then I, who knows how long I have to wait before I get to actually sneeze. And, and even if you finally get to a point where you could actually and not have any problems, then you might not have to sneeze again. I know. It's sad. It's really sad. Okay. How do you feel about hiccups? I, you know how I feel about hiccups. <laughs> Poor Clint has had to work to me, with me for a few years and knows that I get hiccups very frequently and they are violent and painful. And then Clint tries to scare the crap out of me to make it stop. And it's sometimes a, it works. It's a messy job, but someone's got to do it. It's true. What are we talking about today? What are you talking about today? I found this thing. And because EV, electric vehicles, are all the rage to talk about, here is a trailer that is specifically designed as like the EV trailer for RVers. And I, I thought we should look at it. We should look at it. This thing is insane. If you guys haven't heard of it, stay tuned. Welcome to the RV Small Talk Podcast, where we talk about library trailers, truck campers, and people, places, and adventures that go right along with them. We're your host from Princess Craft RV. I'm Clint. And I painted one fingernail red. What are the other? You didn't paint any of the other fingernails. No, I didn't. Is there, is, does this mean something? Does it signify anything? Did you just run out of time? Materials? No, it just, that's the only nail that goes past the finger. So I thought it'd be fun to paint. And guess what? It was. Oh. So that, I mean, that, that's really Is this really going it. to inspire the other fingernails to grow out past the finger? It might inspire them. I'm not sure if I will let them. Okay. So do the other fingers look up to this particular finger like it's the Michael Jackson of fingers? It's the one glove? <laughs> no, my fingernail just got long because I cut my finger really bad and had to keep it wrapped up for a while. So oh. electric vehicles. It's all the rage. It's all we're talking about. So, so let's talk about this trailer and then we can maybe expand it out to our just our thoughts on where electric vehicles are and where they're going for RVers and all that. But look at this. This is I've never seen anything like it. It is. It is, is it called light ship? Uh huh. Yes. Light ship. So if you are near a computer or a phone and you're not driving, don't do this while you're driving. If you can look up lightshiprv.com. That is lightshiprv.com. L-I-G-H-T-S-H-I-P rv.com. And they have a model here and it's, it is very spacey. So let's futuristic. I'll, I'll try to describe it the best I can here. It's, um, it is short. Um, From a height standpoint. Yeah, it is about as tall as a tow vehicle. It is surrounded by windows. The whole thing is windows. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. How long is it? Probably about 15, maybe 20 feet long. And then what, what happens essentially is when you're at your campsite. Here's your, here's your exterior length is 27, 27 feet. feet. Oh, it's longer than I thought. Exterior width is eight foot, six inches. Exterior height in road mode. Okay. We'll talk about road mode here in a little bit is six foot, nine inches. And then when you get to your campground, the entire thing comes up yeah. to create a taller space inside mm -hmm. and then you have the windows all the way around yeah. the the top half of it. So when it is up in camp mode, it is ten feet tall from from the exterior. So so pretty large. And then and then the interior height when it's extended, if you will, is seven foot six inches. So this with those big windows and all, this could feel very airy. 
very open. All the words your mom uses in her <laughs> RV videos. It's so open. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's kind of what it, it looks like. It looks like a dark gray, sleek mm-hmm. Tesla esque. Yeah. Spaceship. But in road mode, it's so low, you wonder what the heck is in there because you couldn't possibly, you know, I mean, why would you have such a long, narrow space? It's, it's like the, the interior space of a teardrop trailer, but really long. But long, right. And there's no slide outs. It doesn't go out. It goes up. Yeah, it's a slide up. It's a slide up. It's a slide up. So here's here's the, the deal. Whenever you're trying to work for efficiency, as electric vehicles obviously are, um, you do that largely by reducing weight and wind resistance mm-hmm. whenever you're towing. Mm-hmm. So this trailer obviously is trying to hit that wind resistance, you know, tug it down real low, reduce its what they call a drag coefficient. Right. Um, I don't know if they're able to do much weight. And this is one thing if we're going to expand just briefly. This is one thing the current batch of EVs have going against them. They can be, they can have really efficient motors. They can be aerodynamic as all get out. Think about the Tesla cars and all that. But from, so aerodynamics, fine. But from a weight standpoint, EVs, electric vehicles, because of their massive battery banks, they are really heavy. So the only thing that you can really fight is the wind drag almost. Okay. To make them efficient. Okay. And so that's one thing that they did by, by making it a, I don't know, compactable trailer. So you get less of that wind drag. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've seen a couple trailers that kind of had this look. Um, what's that one up in Canada that pops up that we love so much and it has like a year the wait Alto? list? Yes. The Alto. Yeah. Yeah. This... I mean, it kind of looks like it in the sense of like the futuristic type thing. But there are some things that this trailer has that I I'm not sure if they exist in any other trailer that I've heard of. Or, I mean, just exciting that this might be the new normal in the future um, as more people are getting electric vehicles. So let's talk about some of the things that make this different than like a really expensive pop up trailer. Right. So it does pop up. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> it is aerodynamic in tow mode. Let's get that out of the way. It, but in camp mode, when it's up, it's a big space. We just said the trailer overall is 27 feet long and exterior height of over 10 feet and interior height of over seven foot. It's a good space, really good space. But they're aiming for the all electric market. So the trailer itself is all electric. We were talking like induction cooktop yeah. and... Yeah, so so and maybe twelve volt air conditioner systems and all that. You think you're a twelve volt compressor refrigerator, but one thing that this has that is supposed to help with the range anxiety when towing because mm-hmm. that's another thing that people have. Well, sure, the the Ford all electric truck and the Cyber truck that's coming out from. Uh, Tesla and the Rivian trucks. And I must admit the Rivian off- offerings look pretty good and they're really marketed well to the mm-hmm. outdoorsy crowd. It, they're, they're going after them. The problem is, is this uh, whole thing of range anxiety. How far can I go? So is the power there? Well, for most electric vehicles, the power is actually there to tow, whether their drivetrains are set up for it, you know, mechanically is one thing, but the power is typically there but you decrease the range significantly when you're, when you're using towing? that when you're towing yeah because you're having to start and and maintain speed with more weight and more drag it sounds like towing a trailer with an electric vehicle takes a special type of person who does a special type of planning and pre-thinking yes. this yeah. is probably not the setup for someone like me who likes to just throw mm-hmm. stuff in a trailer mm-hmm. and drive around. Yeah. So I've actually followed a few people who've done like cross the nation um, EV tr- road trips and EV motorcycle trips. So they have all electric motorcycles too. And that's just it. These people are either really kind of engineering minded mm-hmm. or, uh, um, or they're also maybe a game and chip sort of thing. So they, they strategize mm-hmm. and they really get a kick out of the strategy or maybe a com- combination or something like that. 
So right now, that's who's really buying into this engineering type, strategy type people, people who are trying to win this early pioneering era of the EVs because it's not easy. But yeah, and there are really big drawbacks that we keep hearing in all the news articles yeah. and and social media. Everyone keeps saying the same thing is, you know, there's not enough charging stations. And yep. what if you get stuck? OK, so like you're towing a trailer, you have that anxiety yeah. of the trailer basically stealing your car's battery life. Right. And then you're done. You go, so you know, you buy it and you're like, okay, this is top of the line EV might get us to just over 200 miles. Well, if, if you were to do the deal, 200 miles out of a charge. Mm -hmm. But now that you're towing, you've cut that in half. Right. You know, that's not quite a trip. <laughs> so that, yeah, this thing, uh, the light ship actually addresses that problem in a, I don't know. Maybe it's not that crazy. I feel like it's I have never heard of this. So mm -hmm. I'll let you explain it. Sure. But I think the big thing, the big reason why this is different mm -hmm. is what it has on it. So I've always felt like the next step for EVs towing is to have the trailer have its own massive battery bank. And you could use the trailer's battery bank to backfill the tow vehicle's power. You just create another high, I guess, high voltage. I'm not sure what it, what measurement they would need. Wattage, voltage, ohms for crying out loud. One of those. Um, um, but to be able to use the the trailer's battery pack to, to run the motor. So that's one way to get range extended and all that. But this has its battery bank. It uses it differently. This trailer, get this. It's a four-wheel trailer, but it's also a four-motor trailer trailer the trailer has its own electric motors for its own wheels so the trailer is a vehicle and it's in a way it's it's uh, it's its own vehicle yeah um it is still trailing it, it gets its instruction from your tow vehicle it steers but it actually the motors make the wheels turn yes. instead of just something pulling it yes that is crazy. So the tow vehicle, in a sense, uh, this is not this is not a perfect way to describe it, but in a sense, the tow vehicle is providing mostly just direction, right? Um, and and information to the to the trailer to follow correctly. So in turn, the conundrum of not being able to go far. Uh, might not be a problem anymore because your trailer is essentially not dragging your truck right not dragging your, behind your, your truck, truck is not yeah. dragging your trailer your trailer is driving itself right. just being hooked up to your truck i mean it's right. mind-blowing to think about and so and so some of the most inefficient times of driving no matter what type of motor or engine technology you're using is going from a dead stop and getting up to speed maintaining speed is not generally the least the most inefficient time. Right. So this is this is really cool because your tow vehicle isn't going to lose so much efficiency in those start, dead stop kind of startups this and up hills and hills. Can you imagine hills? This could be a game changer. Yeah. As long as the technology, I, I can't imagine how many accelerometers and gyroscopes this thing needs <laughs> to, to get us information. I, I, I think my first thought is... You know, when we are registering vehicles, that's always the question of like, oh, we don't like this doesn't have to be. Sorry, titled the same way a car is because it doesn't have a motor. Mm -hmm. But if the trailer mm -hmm. has a motor, I mean, is it going to be licensed and registered differently? Yeah. And these would definitely have to be registered and all that. It's different states. Or have different laws, but the weight of this is going to be, you know, there's a certain weight in Texas that if a trailer is a certain size, a certain weight or below, it doesn't matter. You don't have to do inspections. That's at the all. inspection. Yeah. Yeah. Which is tied to registration. Yes. Oh, wait, we're getting rid of that. We we are, aren't we? We are. Breaking in news. In Texas. If you're not in Texas, this doesn't apply. Texas uh, vehicle registration is going away completely, which is... <laughs> Awesome. It, it it's I don't know I I haven't really come to an idea of of what this all means. I feel like it, it's going to mean a lot <laughs> somehow. It's like good yeah, and bad. <laughs> I, I don't know the details of it, but anyway, that it just crossed my mind with the trailer because mm -hmm. if a trailer has a motor, mm -hmm. I mean, I, 
Okay, so this trailer has four electric motors on yeah, it. Yeah, four wheels, four motors. So when you stop to charge your vehicle, do you need to charge your trailer? Or do they just pass electricity back and forth as needed? So that's that's where I'm not completely sure. I do know that the trailer has the capacity to charge your tow vehicle off of its own battery bank. I do know that so you So if can, your truck battery dies, you hook it. Mm-hmm. I just It's always the other way. Mm-hmm. It's the other way around. Mm-hmm. Your truck charges your trailer. And then the the trailer also can be used as a massive battery bank for your house. What? Let's let's say cuz cuz that's why they're selling all these little portable solar generators and battery banks right now in case there's a flood or, or power grid goes down and all snow that. Snowpocalypse. The snowpocalypse in Texas. Mm. People are buying these instead of regular generators and it's huge in places where they're starting to ban generators, right? Well, this can act like a massive battery bank that you plug your house into in a time of emergency. That is insane. Yeah. And it comes not with places where you can attach solar, but it comes with a ton of built-in solar. I've never seen so much solar on top of an RV. Right. It's even on top of the awnings. Right. Like it is everywhere. What? One thing we didn't talk about, how much does this thing actually weigh? Mm, mm-hmm, Will mm-hmm. they even tell you that or they just don't want to put that out well, there yet? I think that that's one thing that, let me see if I can get back to that spot because I'm scrolling pretty this, quick This here. website is actually it's, it's dynamic, but pretty it, visually stunning, um, but. Yeah. Wait, here we go. The weight is oh. fully loaded with gear, they say. Now, I don't think that this is actually come out to the public yet this is still maybe prototyping phase i'm not sure again this is the starship rv starship and the model is the l1 and you can reserve it so it's kind of like how tesla starship starts. try again light, light well i got that completely wrong didn't i light ship <laughs> rv starship <laughs> yeah this is the enterprise oh, i was thinking more like white rabbit or something like that anyways anyways no that jefferson Airplane did the White Rabbit. The yes. Starship was like their 80s Jefferson's version. Jefferson's Starship is like the one after. Yeah. Same people, different. Okay, whatever. Some of the same people. Uh, the weight. 7,500 pounds. I expected so much more. Me too, because that's the gross weight. That's Disgusting. not the dry weight. Ew. 7,500 pounds. I expected a lot. Now, that, now, how much of that do you think is the batteries that, and the motors? Yeah. It begs the question, how sparse is the interior? I mean, with all those windows that we saw, if that is glass, and who knows, but if that is glass, that's heavy. Glass is heavy. That is heavy. And the interior, we didn't even talk about that. The interior is very uh, on par for what we're seeing now with the trends. It's very clean. It's very European. It's very white. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it is very minimalistic. Yeah. You have a countertop, a sink, an induction yeah. stovetop and a wraparound couch. I will say, since you brought up um, Star Trek or whatever earlier, looking at this interior picture, and again, we will share these in the show notes. So RVSmallTalk.com mm-hmm. if you want to see. And, and you can always go to LightshipRV.com. It actually does remind me of some of the interior spaces that you find in like Star Trek Next Generation and some of the later Star is Trek this, shows. Is this the fridge? Or is that just a drawer? There is a pull-out drawer under the microwave that kind of looks like a a refrigerator. It has essentially the same floor plan as like a new camp barefoot. Yes. It's just stretched out. Stretched out. Yes. Yeah. Um, And and there's windows literally all the way around it. I mean, it's just gorgeous. To me, screams Scandinavian dream. Like Scandinavian dream. Perfect sense for the high end. You know how there's like the Ikea crowd? Yeah. And then there's the high end Ikea crowd. Like, have you ever been to, what's the name of that furniture place down in Austin that's like all Scandinavian furniture, but it's not Ikea and you don't have to put it together yourself? I have no idea. Anyways, it's it's like that crowd where it's super high end, clean, and somehow very Scandinavian looking. This looks like, and it looks like it belongs there too. It does. So... So there, there lies some of the some of the thoughts that are I hadn't even considered having a powered a power drive trailer, where it not only supports its own weight on 
I mean, it's not, I don't think you can say it's a dual axle setup because each each wheel has its own separate motor. Um, you noticed something right off the bat when you first saw it. Your your complaint right off the bat was what on this website? My complaint. Mm-hmm. Do you recall? I don't. That was like yesterday. It that was, was a it long was, time it was, ago. It was, it was a whole twenty four hours ago. It's so low. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And all, it's low to the and all the pictures ground. And all the pictures are in off road locations. It it is very low to the ground, and you pointed out that, I mean, that's exactly what they're trying to do is make it super sleek and aerodynamic mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm reduce that drag because if you're if you have an electric vehicle that's like what your number one concern so i get where they were going with this um it's it's a beautiful i mean the way they're presenting again is this out no but it's beautiful it's beautiful what they're showing (laughs) It, it i don't know it does look very low to the ground and if you're trying to go anywhere Take, take off your speed, of a paved yeah, road take your speed you're, bump slow you're gonna have a lot of trouble so i wonder if maybe i don't know solar that's built in not bolted on up to three thousand watt or three kilowatts of, of solar, solar power. power fine solar serenity and battery storing storing up to 80 k watt hours is that 80, a lot? 80,000 watt hours. I don't know. Is that a lot? Or 80 kilowatt hours. It's it's a lot. It's sizable. Very, very much so. So, so it looks like with that much solar and you being efficient on how you're using your energy, and of course there's connected apps. There's got to be. <laughs> of course um, you can change the thermostat on your phone. That much solar, that much storage capacity, um, and running smartly with 12 volt items you could do a great job of off gridding with this trailer the big question is where are you going to drive it to the you're not scraping it all up yeah and if your tow vehicle which isn't towing as much weight as it looks like it's towing because it's, it's carrying its own weight uh if your tow vehicle can get you there and back and back that's an important part Mm -hmm. yeah it might be able to get you there but you got to get back to a charging station but that much solar maybe you just plan your route to drive a few hours a day i mean this is how many more of these types things do you think we will see in the next 12 months in the next 12 months um up to 10 but i wouldn't say I'd say it'd be somewhere in the five-ish range. I feel like the industry as a whole, like, I mean, it does weird stuff, like yeah. all industries, but I feel like uh, where we are in the middle of this big mm-hmm. wave of um, off-grid. Oh, off-grid. Yes. Yeah. Camping and boondocking. And like, that's kind of like the cool thing to do. And people want to know when they come in and look for RVs, how off-road capable is it what does it have that'll make me camp off grid you know these are the questions that we're getting because it's what it you know it's what people are into it's what's on instagram it's what people you know want think is important right now i'm wondering just like hypothetically if this is the next overlanding the next camping craze right like how far can I get with right. my electric vehicle? How long can I camp? Because my trailer can feed off my vehicle. My vehicle can feed off my trailer. Yeah. I mean, if you have that much solar and batteries, mm-hmm. it's kind of like a different take on the off-road challenge. And I there you go. I think that's yeah. really cool. So I'm looking at the, I clicked on the reserve your L1 uh, page and for five hundred dollars you can you can reserve yours and there's two packages it's l1 essential all electric camping and it says it's starting at one hundred twenty five thousand dollars but after your tax credit one hundred eighteen thousand four hundred dollars that's insane and the other one is the l1 long range all electric camping plus drive motor so i don't know much about so um, maybe they have a model that doesn't have the motor yeah i'm just is that what that means drive motor like literally a motor yeah i'm guessing that's what it is so you can get it with or without why wouldn't you get it with i mean 
I mean, if you're financing, just go for it. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's really the crazy thing about this trailer. Did you trailer. see the price with the drive motor? Oh, yeah. The With the drive motor, it is $151,500, but it's only one hundred and thirty nine six after the tax credit. Yeah. So this is very firmly in Airstream territory. Territory, yeah. From, from, a, from a look, from a... Off road ability. I don't know. It seems even lower than some of the airstreams I've seen. But let's say let's say in the in the realm of off road ability, but price definitely in the range for something that large, a uh, uh, twenty seven foot airstream. Yeah, this is this is sitting kind of in the same space. Yeah. What do you know? What it's like actually made of the silver stuff on the outside. Like, is that like aluminum? Is yeah. it? Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Let me uh, see if we can go back and and find out again. This website looks pretty new. I thought you were supposed to ask me questions. <clears throat> no, I, <sighs> I uh, got to tell you, you uh, you have done well. You've I'm talking your more own. than you thought I would. You've, you've carried your own. I can't stay quiet. Must talk even if I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so maybe this one. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? What was that? That was my mom texting me saying, hey, there's milk in the fridge for, for the kids whenever y'all get here. Okay. A text just popped up on Clint's computer from a random number. I mean, like not a save number. Do you, did you not save your mom's number? Uh, it, it shows as her on my phone, but on my computer okay. it messages for some reason. And it just said a number and then it said, we have milk for your children. That's okay. Set it outside in a bowl. They'll lap it up like this kids. <laughs> That is a weird text to get from a random number. Yeah, but it made sense to me. <laughs> so yeah, um, I don't know. I would I would imagine it's aluminum. Of course, the windows are windows. I mean, they definitely look glass. They do not look like the the acrylic windows, mm -hmm. which I think I would be okay with. But these definitely look glass. I mean, it looks like someone took a canoe and painted it black and turned it upside down and it's it made being it, but it made it real glossy behind a rivian yeah yeah it is a shiny upside down canoe but when it but when you throw water on it it expands and no wait that's not really good. <laughs> it's not a gremlin um i mean i am excited to see all the things that people come up with that i haven't even oh. thought about like this would, is a great website it's good marketing this are, you, are you sucked in it is beautiful i can't i won't buy it because i, I can't <laughs> because I can't, but it's, I mean, I kind of hope this makes it. I hope it makes it out there that these reservations actually come through because there's always some, it's, it's almost like a, you saw it with the early Teslas, you know, you put down your reservation, how long will it take to actually come off the line and start to get into consumers hands? Same with Rivian and uh, any number of the EV things coming out lately. I think not only is it going to make it, but it's going to have all the competition soon yeah because i just okay here's the other thing people who have evs and like i'm not trying to offend anybody but but here she goes <laughs> but here i am offending <laughs> people who buy electric vehicles tend to be the more business type people okay. are those the people who are who are camping are you are we trying to break into a new camping demographic here? Maybe, but also look at, just look at how hard Rivian has gone after the off grid camping crowd. Rivian has just gone bonkers for the camping crowd. But yeah, I, I could see like a, like a suit and tie businessman mm -hmm. driving a Rivian. Mm -hmm. Who likes to go camping? So, so there, there it is. I it, guess it does. It seems like a narrow. You like, I want to go camping, but I want it to be super luxury. But I also have an electric vehicle. I, I have a theme, and it's called but, EV. Yeah. <laughs> I have a theme. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's interesting. I love the look of it. I would love to step inside one and just. So there's two Experience things here. It. This is this is not one of the big big companies. It's not Forest River. It's not Thor. It, it's not. That's true. It, so, so you're dealing with a small startup, which could be super exciting to watch, uh, but also hard to find this thing. They're going. It looks like they're going consumer direct. However, 
Lightship RV. If you want to at least show it to us, please bring one down and talk to us. We'll, we'll get on the podcast. We'll do shoot video and all that stuff. Lightship RV, come to Princess Craft so that we can see it. Oh, my gosh. Is there a contact us on here? I bet there is. We'll find it. Ooh, Kaylin, get us connected to Lightship RV. We could be the first. Anyway, yeah. I think this is super cool. I'm really, really excited. Um, and I feel like if if I were to buy one of these, mm -hmm. I would name it Betty. <laughs> Betty Lightship? Aww. Is that why? No. I don't who's Betty Lightship? Well, I was thinking Betty White, and I was like, no, Betty Light, no Betty but Lightship. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's a really pretty, pretty toaster oven of a trailer. Toaster. It's an upside down canoe. Okay. Everybody, um, that, that actually gets me to the end of my thoughts. I do think that we should do another episode maybe here soon on just a real look at where we think we're at in the development of EVs and RVing. It'd this be is, great if we could talk to somebody about that. So we should maybe bring in someone, Lightship. Uh, bring in someone. <laughs> maybe maybe we can find the local Arivian rep representative. Oh, man. Let's, That'd be cool. Let's do it. If you guys have an idea for a podcast, something you would like to hear, whether it's tips, tricks, people to interview, companies that you're interested in, let us know. Uh, we take... Uh, messages on Facebook at RV Small Talk, or you can just post an RV Small Talk community, which is a group we have on Facebook. We love getting your ideas um, and hearing what you want to hear because it um, it really helps us. Other than that, rate and review is extremely helpful for other people to find our podcasts. And you can always check out show notes and give us feedback at RVSmallTalk.com. Thank you, Lindsay. That gets us out of this episode. We'll come at you again soon with another episode, and we still don't know what we're going to talk about for that one, so it'll be a surprise then, too. But we might change clothes. That's a tall order. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.